Hey everybody, Karen Bryan here talking with Lupi Godinez who is fighting Tabitha Ricci at UFC 295. Baby girl, do you take any time off? Do you do you do you not like breaks or vacations or anything like that? <laughs> yeah, to be honest, after my last fight, I'm, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this and do that, blah blah blah. I had a whole thing, right? And then as soon as I get to Vancouver because when we talk, I was in Ontario, right? right. Then I had a day and a few hours, <laughs> and then I received the call, and then I'm like, okay, sure, I guess all of the stuff that I thought was going to happen, cancel, right. I got to book my flight to come back to Mexico and, and get back to training. I love it. Well, and what you're referencing, folks, if folks did it, if they didn't see it, they need to. You were on episode 98 of Festivities with me and Hanato, and it was right after Noche UFC, and we had such a great time with you. And yeah, it was really, it was such a great win there already that I understand why you might want to keep this momentum going, right? So that, that probably is part of it. On the one hand, you know you deserve a rest and you've earned a rest, but at the same time, it's like, well, you're, win you're on a win streak. I understand why you wouldn't want to stop. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, when you have a, I had a full camp and I felt great, no injuries, none yeah. of that. So then it's nothing better to, you know, the feeling of going back to training with no injuries and, mm -hmm. and you're already in shape. It's just a matter of keeping a, a different game plan. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I cannot go wrong with that. No. So how, you know, how, how have you processed that win? Uh, and everything at Noche in terms of, we know how big a moment that was, but it also, you were one of the biggest stars of that night. So did you did you feel, um, you know, like a bump in support? Have you felt all of a sudden like, wow, there's more people paying attention now? Is that something that was tangible to you? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, it's pretty crazy. Honestly, that was one of my, the best experience I ever had in the UFC, you know. Mm -hmm. Every fight is a, a whole different experience and a whole different, like, greatness. Yep. But that night, it was just so special, you know? It was, it was the, the vibe. Did you get a chance to be there? I was there, yeah. I was working. It was amazing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, like, it was, yeah. like, so real, right? Like, yeah. they're walking out, the, the wings, the, you know, the mariachi, mm -hmm. everything. Like, the whole, like, feeling, you know, the people being... With so much energy it was just yeah. a great experience to be part of it's pretty cool and it's wild too because it was such a success um i'm sure you heard you know dana said afterwards that he wants to maybe do it at the sphere next year yeah that'll be great <laughs> i know i know like, oh my god it'd be amazing but also i do know that um it's in the plans too for us to go back to mexico because it's been a while right and we haven't been there i think i was in mexico city for fight night in 2019 and then you know a lot of stuff has happened obviously so i do hope that that's something that uh comes back around and we get to do that because it was it was so fun and i, I like you said it was so cool the way it's like we have a special time for a mariachi band and and you know and, it, and to me it was such a communal evening it just felt like i i live in los angeles right so like i'm amongst right. latinos all the time but I, I i can understand and appreciate that for those who maybe aren't in a city with so many concentrated people that it probably felt like a really great night of celebration yeah, I honestly thought I was in Mexico. A lot of the time I was talking as if I was in Mexico. Then I kept, you know, like, oh, no, yeah. I'm not in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so listen, the matchup with Tabitha, obviously, you know, she is a very good fighter as well. And she is also on a win streak. I think she's got one more win in a row than you do, but you're a more frequent fighter than her. But, um, but so what do you make of the actual matchup? Um, you know, uh, baby shark there coming out of Brazil. What do you, what do you make of the matchup? Yeah. I mean, she's well run there, you know, she's yeah. a great fighter, but you know, I, I do see myself coming on top and, and the whole, the, all this work that we've been putting in with, with my new team, mm -hmm. um, is going to show. You know, it's going to show and um, I'm really excited for, for the matchup. Yeah. What do you what do you think is the most dangerous element of her game? Obviously, I mean, you know, judo, grappling, all that. I mean, but you're not you're good at that, too. Yeah. Like, you know, I, it's just, you know, she's as you say, she has a good judo, good jujitsu. But I, yeah. so does me. You know, I've been mm -hmm. working with uh, with so many athletes over here in Mexico and and. Mm -hmm. You know, they're having a hard time, you know, so 
I do. I, I'm prepared. I'm prepared for for her and whatever she puts on the table. I'll have an answer and and let's see if she has an answer for my staff as well, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, how important is it for you in terms of? you know, rankings and movement. Do you look at that a lot when you are handed the matchups in terms of the the strategy and what this win can do for you? Or do you just kind of basically look at the opponent and say, I just want to challenge myself regardless of the movement? <clears throat> yeah, of course, I, I always want to challenge myself just to make, I like to make sure that I'm getting better, that I'm improving, that, yeah. you know, no matter who put me, who you put me in front, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, be a better fighter. Mm-hmm. So I think this step is a right step. And about the rankings, I mean, I think it's important because I have one goal and that goal is to fight for the belt. Yeah. So, yeah, that's important. But at the same time, I leave that to my management and mm-hmm. to the UFC, which I think they have done an amazing job with yeah. the fights they have give, given me, you know, mm-hmm. even though I lost few and won. So... I do think I have learned a lot from each one of those fights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you've gotten a lot of great matchups. And that's that's what's interesting, too. When you look at both of your records, you have Jessica Penne in common. You guys have different uh, outcomes with her, though. So do you? is there anything that you saw in her fight that you could take away? Um, or, or, you know, you have a common opponent, right? So you could see what Jessica did against Tabitha. So did you take anything away from that to give you hints on how you should approach Tabitha? Uh yeah yeah of course yeah. you know much all about the fights and of mm-hmm. course you know she's she's also I don't want to say new in the sport because she's yeah. been training for a long time but she has similar uh, amount of fights as me yeah. you know like we both come from LFA so mm-hmm. we have the same experience and and so when we are like this I do believe we can make a lot of more changes like in 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 the few months that we have off I feel like we are more prone to to suck new information than if you've been fighting for you know for way longer obviously yeah. it's a little bit hard to change things around just because of you know so many years mm-hmm. uh, but yeah I'm expecting the best version of of her And in terms of I think we kind of got into this um on festivities and stuff, but yeah, what are you, what are you most proud of in terms of the evolution you've already gotten to? Like, is it, is it the fact that your hands have come along so much more? What do you, you know, when you look back on making these, this progress and even these little adjustments in the months and stuff like that, like, what have you noticed? Like, wait a minute, I got really good at this or I got a lot better at this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think just the, the confidence of of just being myself in the cage, Mm -hmm. just unleash myself fully you know i feel like before i could see things and 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 but i how can i explain well i couldn't just like get in the cage and do them you know i was having a hard time to figure it out to putting everything together just because the training that i had is not it wasn't optimum for myself right so now with you know with the change i made and everything i you know, every single day is a grind. Every single day, mm-hmm. you know, I have always worked hard my whole career. Mm-hmm. But it's different on working hard. But it's also different on working hard. And you have a whole team behind you. And you have so many different training partners. Mm-hmm. And you have great coaches to that they're there every single day watching over you. Right? So I, that's the biggest difference I found. I love it. And it's so, it's obviously the last time for Noche, uh, Alexa was training alongside and she was going for her great moment too. Has obviously, the, you know, I know that that team is such a good, it seems like such a good place. How is it now though? Cause you can't train with her, right? Cause she's still healing up. So, um, what, you know, that's been a little bit of an adjustment, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, you know, she still comes to the gym to watch, yeah. you know, she gives me tips and stuff and, yeah. and it's always good to have her there. She's really knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, yes, we did train together a lot and we did our rounds together and everything. Yeah. But closer to the fight, we couldn't exactly be... You cannot have two firecrackers together <laughs> because something is going to blow, right? Yeah. So, of course, you know, like, at, by the end of the camp, coach need to be really uh, careful, you know, with, mm-hmm. with, with both of us. We both of us have a fight. We both of us are, like, ready to explode, right? Yeah. So 
we have so many other teammates that have helped us. And and she mentioned yeah. when she won the belt, she mentions um she mentioned Omar, which mm -hmm. is one of her main training partners. That he's there every single day, help helping everyone to get ready for the fights. And and he's like one fifty, one forty five. Mm -hmm. We have Brian that has been helping me too, which he walks around 135, 125, mm -hmm. I believe. You know, he's like perfect size. He's like pretty much Tabata, pretty yeah. much, you know? Yes. And, and 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 other other girls and other guys too, right? Like yeah. we have so many uh, different styles and different um, sizes. Mm -hmm. And also that is really good is that they all, because they are, it's only, it's like a family and then yeah. they all can do okay, we, she's fighting Valentina, and, like, they know how to mimic Valentina. You right, know what I mean? Right, right. They saw they their opponents as well. Oh, Lupi's fighting uh, Richie or, or, or my last opponent. They watch their fights, and they act like my opponents, you know? Right. So it's great. It's, it's, it's great. So it's not only Alexa or it's not only Irene, you know? It's, like, a whole team behind us. Yeah, no, and that's and that's incredible. And that's, like you were saying before, you know, and maybe it's not that it's disrespectful to your old team. It's just that you got to a level that you exceeded where you were and you just needed, you just needed to go somewhere else, right. To get more. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, people change, fighters change, you know, and sometimes the level is just, you get into a point where, and especially in the UFC where everyone is strong, everyone is fast, everyone has good technique. And sometimes it's just a matter of inches, just a matter yeah. of, you know, of, of, you know, the coaching, just like being there and having the time and same with your training partners, who you're training with, who you're training right. with. Right. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to be here and I'm a really good place, you know, like I have never felt like this happy and this ready and right. this, you know, of course I love fighting and I have all, I always want to fight, you know? Right. But now it's like different. Now it's a whole different confidence level. I love it. Well, you know, the, I have to ask you though, because I literally was talking to my daughter about this earlier today. And it's one of those things where, and I don't know if you feel the pressure, but you're in the UFC, you're doing well, you're on the rise, you're a good looking girl. Do you feel the pressure to sell yourself in the other ways that a lot of women do, right? The OnlyFans or the sexy posts and, you know, it comes naturally to some girls and it doesn't to others, but I feel like a lot of time girls feel that they have to do that. And I'm just curious what your take is on it. Yeah. To be honest, no, because I don't really care. Like if you don't like me, you like, if you don't, <laughs> don't, you know, honestly. Right. So like, as long as I'm good and I'm happy and you know, if, if for me it was good to, if I feel today to, to post a underwear picture or whatever, then yeah. I'll do it, You know what I mean? But I just don't have that, like, I don't have that in me, uh -huh. I guess. And I will never say never, right? right. Like, or no. But uh, honestly, like, I'm fine like this, you know? Like, <laughs> don't, I don't know. I just don't, don't, don't do that. I don't know. Yeah, no, and like, that's what I'm saying. I do, I, it's just, like I said, something a lot of girls are great at it and it comes very natural to them and it doesn't seem like it's a thing at all, you know? And I literally am the type where I tell my kid, I'm like... I got to post something for the algorithm. I'm like, I don't, uh, I don't know, you know? And then and like, I, but I feel like it's, it's not a requirement, you know what I mean? But it is part of the game and, and all of that, you know? Yeah, it is part, part of the game, but you can, I mean, if I don't want to do that, like I can also post different pictures, which right. they can be sexy, but it's just, you won't be see like my boobs or right, right, right. ass, right? Like, well, you posted a picture the other day and you look like a total badass and you're just wearing like a tank top and your jeans. But that is a fierce woman. Like, I, you know, and it's a very sexy picture because, yeah, you just look like you're in such like ownership of who you are. And that is very that that is very sexy. Yeah, yeah like, you know, and, and also my dad looks on my Instagram. I don't know. <laughs> <that's what>, yeah. <laughs> right. There is that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and so for you, what has been the, has there been one thing that um, has been like the greatest sort of change that came along with the success, you know, all the success in the octagon and outside of it or whatever, but like, has there been one thing where you're like, 
I used to not be able to afford to buy this every week and now I can, or like, I never got to go on this or get, has there been one thing that like really you, you remember as a, uh, as a, as a signal of like success or something that like is a treat for you that you can do now that you used to not be able to do? Yeah. And one of those things coming to Mexico, you know, yeah. like yeah. it's crazy because before I, when I couldn't um, get out of Canada for, mm -hmm. we were doing our papers and stuff, yeah. I wasn't allowed to leave until my papers were ready. So I couldn't leave Mexico for like a little bit over 10 years. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, Canada. I wouldn't leave Canada to go to Mexico. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Come to Mexico for a little bit over 10 years because of paperwork money wise i couldn't afford to to buy a a, a a plane or even if i was here i had no money to pay for anything else you know so you know just now having the freedom to be like you know what i gotta go to mexico then i just go you know i love it you know just if i want to buy this i just go and buy it you know yeah. and then i won't say vacations because i don't have time for vacations <laughs> i was just gonna say yeah <laughs> Yeah. And I don't even mean it as a, it's not even necessarily about like, oh, I'm, I made it. So I get to get material things now. It's just that it is. Yeah. yeah I know exactly what you mean. Like you used to worry a little bit more, you know, I right. used to work construction, clean houses. I used mm -hmm. to babysit. I used to do so many things. And on top of a golf training. So now I have the opportunity to just focus on training yeah. and not do all those things. Right. Like yeah. now different opportunities come by where I can mm -hmm. make a little bit more, let work a little bit less and stuff like that. So I, you know, it's, it's, it's great. Yeah. So I feel like it's always like the day that fighters can get rid of their day job and just a hundred percent go and be training has to be one of the best days of their life. You know what I mean? When you know, you can just go all in where you're making enough to support yourself and you don't have to, yeah, like work other jobs. That's got to feel very satisfying. Yes, exactly. I like that. Well, yeah. and on that note, though, about Mexico, do you have family or friends in Acapulco? Hopefully, everybody's okay. Uh, no, I don't have anyone there, but my mom okay. is from there, actually, but she's okay. not. Okay, but okay. Pretty yeah. sad. Well, I know, well, I know, but hopefully everybody is okay there because, yeah, yeah, it is such a beautiful country. And, like, I mean, I'm with you. Like, I need to go back. I haven't been in, like, a year or so. I definitely need to go back. But, um, listen, you're back in action at Madison Square Garden. What do you – What do you, you You already fought at MSG once before, didn't you? No, I haven't been there. Oh, I thought you did. Okay, I thought you did. Well, so then what is your expectation? Because that is a big deal. Yeah, you know, I, I, I say this before, and I don't care what I fight, you know, could mm -hmm. be in a parking lot, could be anywhere, you know? Yeah. It's a cage. I still have my fight week. I have an opponent, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's just, you know, I'm happy that the UFC gave me the opportunity to be in mm -hmm. that card, big card in New York, you know, kind of get better than that. Just, they're pretty much telling me, we like you. Yeah. It's not bad, you know? Yeah. So, that's you know that's nice to 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 feel that way yeah uh, yeah i'm excited and i think it's gonna be crazy i think it's gonna be a lot of high energy it's gonna be great fights people are gonna be lots of fun and yeah it's gonna be great and matt new york is always fun and um msg is legendary and and you always show out you put on a show every time i know everybody's looking forward to it so um thank you for taking the time with me today and folks again if you guys haven't seen or look for festivities 98 uh we had such a good time and loopy you got you went into your whole backstory and if folks if you, you she's mentioned it here a little bit but if you want to know more about her move from mexico to canada all the things that she and her family went through it's really an incredible story like your story is incredible one day there's going to be a loopy movie you know that right I really hope so. I'm booking a movie. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, until then, you're going to just keep fighting. And uh, we're really looking forward to seeing you and Tabitha. So best of luck to you. Buena suerte. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much. See Bye. ya.